When first among the immortal gods anger broke out, dividing them into two factions, of which one resolved to unseat the power of Kronos and to make Zeus absolute king, mark that, while the opposing side resolved no less that Zeus should never rule the gods. At that time, I, offering the best of all advice, tried to convince the titan sons of heaven and earth, and failed. They despised cunning. In their pride of strength, they foresaw easy victory and the rule of might. I knew the appointed course of things to come. My mother, Themis, or Earth, one person, there were various names, had many times foretold to me that not brute strength, not violence, but cunning must give victory to the rulers of the future. This I explained to them with reasons which they found not worth one moment's heed. Then, of the courses open to me, it seemed best to take my stand, my mother with me, at the side of Zeus, willing and welcome. It was I who gave that counsel through which ancient Kronos and his crew lie buried now in the black abyss of Tartarus. That was the help I gave the king of the gods, and this is my reward. This is his black ingratitude. To look on all friends with suspicion, this disease would seem to be inherent in a tyrant's soul. Now for your question, on what charge Zeus tortures me, I'll tell you. On succeeding to his father's throne, at once he appointed various rites to various gods, giving to each his set place and authority. Of wretched humans he took no account, resolved to annihilate them and create another race. This purpose there was no one to oppose but I. I dared... I saved the human race from being ground to dust, from total death. For that, I am subjected to these bitter pains. Agony to endure, heart-rending to behold. I mortal men, but being myself not thought to merit pity, am thus cruelly disciplined, a sight to fix dishonor on the name of Zeus. Only a heart of iron, a temper carved from rock, Prometheus could refuse compassion for your pains. Had I known, I could have wished never to see this sight. Now I have seen sorrow and anger rack my heart. Indeed, my friends feel pity at the sight of me. Did your offense perhaps go further than you have said? Yes. I caused men no longer to foresee their death. What cure did you discover for their misery? I planted firmly in their hearts a blind hopefulness. Your gift brought them great blessing. I did more than that. I gave them fire. What? Men, whose life is but a day, possess already the hot radiance of fire. They do, and with it they shall master many crafts. This, then, was the offense for which you suffer here. The Neanderthaler is known for a few things uh, in particular. Um, the name given to his society is that of Moustrian. And the Moustrian society in the mountains, uh, the Pyrenees and, and the southern uh, western side of France and Spain, uh, the Moustrian caves are known to contain a lot of artwork, paintings, and, and artifacts that suggest that the Moustrians, the Neanderthalers, uh, brought forth fire uh, to Europe and Africa and that fire led to cooking. And cooking in their format would basically be making a stew, either a fish stew or a stew of vegetables and, and pieces of meat, animals that they would find. Uh, 
locally. Uh, and, and in order to do the cooking, they had to come up with an invention which suggests the beginning of their activity, and that's the spear. And if one follows the code through, which we don't have time to go into detail today, you would, of course, get to um, a place in our history where shaking the spear becomes important as a marker along the way to development, and that leads you to the name of Will I Am Shakespeare. A book of codes that allows those in the know to access information about the past that is not discussed uh, in normal universities uh, around the world, but is discussed in specialized universities aimed at uh, a clientele of uh, clerics and, and monarchs and leaders of the world and links in the way to the future called roads to the future with R-H-O-D-E-S as opposed to the roads we are shown. Uh, and that information uh, gained about cooking and spears um, leads us to the third most important uh, development, and and that is um, clothes. And and since spearheads were modified at one stage of the game to become scrapers of animal skins, that has enabled scientists to follow the track where. Because it was cold in uh, in the northern part of the Mediterranean, uh, especially, and and in order to survive over the winter period, uh, animal skins were used as as clothing. So the Neanderthaler, a person linked to cooking, a person linked to Weapons, a person linked to clothing, uh, is living a concurrent life to the human life that is uh, happening in the far triangle of Ethiopia, that basic district. Uh, and at one stage of the game, 84,000 years after the arrival of woman, uh, the division of the genders occurs, and one stage later on, the entry or the coming together of the two basic groups, Neanderthalers and human beings, occurs. Prior, I would suggest, from what I've been able to decipher, uh, at a period somewhere around 60,000 B.C. And for a while, they, they basically share activities. There's, there's a suggestion that among the Neanderthalers, there is a significant number of people uh, whom today would we would refer to as uh, uh, idiot savant. I guess the most famous movie made uh, recently is The Rain Man with Tom Cruise. Uh, and uh, it suggests that in the Neanderthal group there is a certain group of people whose brains function much, much, on a much higher level than the rest of the people, and especially of the clan mothers and their men, and 
in, in that society. However, the price they pay for having access to that uh, much higher level of intellect on a very specific uh, part of knowledge is that they become lower in their abilities on, on the other side. On, on practically everything else, and therefore they need assistance from the human species in order to, uh, um, to pursue a normal, quite difficult to use the word normal, but uh, a life beyond what they would be able to do on their own.